what I'm going to talk about here is um, a technique of using drag and drop in a web application. Um, it's a quite simple example, using only a web list where you can be able to drag and drop items within the list. Um, so that's pretty much what, what it's all about. We have an example here where you can see that we uh, kind of have grabbed that line and moved it a little, little bit. Now we need to grab it somewhere else. Um, how this is done is actually that it is using a JavaScript library called Dragula. And it is um, due to Jakob Kruse from uh, Store APS that did the implementation of the JavaScript and uh, connected together with um, the class for WebList in Dataflex. So what I have done here is simply to implement that technique and see how you can actually manip manipulate the data and. Uh, and the items in the list. I have a little demo. Um, I have to log in as another user. So. <coughs> oh, we have a little test menu here. Sorry. Um, There it is. Just had to get rid of the PowerPoint. Well, uh, the purpose of this is that um, it is meant to be used by a taxi or bus company to manage people that should be brought from one place to another. In this case, uh, children going to school, uh, pick them up at the at their home and uh, riding the, uh, the bus to, uh, to the school. And um, we can take a school here and see we have some people that are meant to go there for this day. And we can put them over in this list. This is actually not, uh, oh, I have to choose a car first. Harm and John and uh, uh, Yana. We have them all in the list here. And what we are going to, to see at first is how does this list work? This is a, of the class C web list. And it's not data aware in this case. So I need to feed the data myself. And um, what we can do with it afterwards is that I have some buttons here, up and down. So it's meant to be marking one item in, in the list and then moving it up and down without the drag and drop technique in first, just to see how we are going to manipulate the underlying data source, because there's two levels of this. The user interface that it's managed by the JavaScript class, and then the underlying Dataflex list that keeps the data in a data structure. So um, let's see what we can do here. 
we'll go back. To, we can see if we can move uh, John down here. We could actually do that. We can move him up again. Yeah, that's it. Um, we'll just take the uh, PowerPoint again. So the list is not data aware. So it must manually be filled with data. And um, to do that, there's an event in the list called on manual load data. And you can do anything in that event to fill up the data. Um, it, it will be filled uh, with a uh, array of a uh, struct called a T-Web row. Um, an element in, in this uh, array uh, is one line in the, uh, in, the, in the web list. And it can have one or several columns. But for each row, there is a uh, element in, in the array. And then if we're going to do something with that data, we have a, uh, an event called onProcess Dataset. We can do something with the data and then, uh, yeah, manipulate it. I'll show that later on. Um, the web row struct has, an, has a row ID, has to be unique, and then you can give it a CSS class name. And then there is a member here that's, that's a, is an array, and um, there'll be an element for each column in the list. So if we have a list with only one column, we'll only have one element in there, that array. And uh, the cells array looks like that. It has a value. That's what, what, has been, what will be shown in the list. You can assign it a tooltip. You can also give each cell its own CSS class. And then you have a bunch of options, which is, as default, not used. But you can do it. You, you can use it yourself for anything. And what I do is um, actually this option. I store, in this case, different information for these people going with the bus, different requirements. For example, the first one keeps the uh, geographical. Uh, the XY location, um, and then something about service time at the pickup and uh, delivery. Does he need a wheelchair? Does he have the front seat, or must it be a must it be a high or a low low car? And um, all stuff, all packed into this uh, options array. So that's what I do with the data. We have some methods in the web list to either put data in it, remove it again, or change it. The first one, data set append row. Well, the word said it. It appends a row to the list, and you must pass a row data element to that. Next one, data set insert before, insert row before. Um, instead of just appending an item to the list, if you use this, you can specify which position in the list it should be inserted. Just specify which row ID will go underneath this item once it has been, it has been um, put in the list. You can also remove, data set remove row, and you can also update a row, an existing row. Just send it some new row data and specify which row ID it should be placed uh, in. And these are all methods that will manipulate both the data in, 
in the Dataflex side and the user interface in the, uh, in the list itself. So both the JavaScript object in the browser and the under, uh, underlying uh, data source in Dataflex is being affected by using these methods. Let's see uh, uh, the web demo again and see what we uh, can do uh, with um, removing a, a thing from the list. Let's see if we can get it up. Yeah. Um, I have a button there spelled in Danish. Remove, obvious. And uh, what we do is that we mark a list. Uh, we mark an item in the list and press this one. How did we implement that? Well, let's go back to the PowerPoint and see. I mentioned the on-process data set event. Whenever you call uh, the method process data set, this event will be called and it will be passed the whole bunch of data that the list has in the web row array. Then you can specify yourself which operation are meant to be executed at this specific moment. And it gives you a selected row index. It tells you which is the one that is actually being selected in the row right now in, in the list. So what I do in, in this on click, I send send process data set and give it a one. And uh, in the event, I can see, okay, I go here, the operation is one, that was remove. So I sent this data set remove row method that we saw before, and I have to pass it a row ID. But the row ID is in the array of data that we got into this event. And we also have uh, the selected row index, which points to the specific line that we just uh, are going to remove. So we sim simply have the row ID on the A data, selected row index, and S row ID. So that was pretty easy, removing a row. Moving an item in the list. As you saw before, I could move John up and down. And how would we do that? Well, um, we'll do something slightly different. We will say, OK, if we're moving down, we actually have two items to operate upon. The one that is going to be moved down and the one underneath it that is going to take its place. So actually, we're just swapping those two lines, right? And the selected row index tells us which row will be moved. And the next one, selected row index plus one, will be the one that should be swapped with. So um, I. I take those two and um, I declare two variables of that struct, a row one, a row two, contains all the data of those two lines. And um, then I call the process data set and this time I said, well, it's operation two. Operation two is move an item down. So we get the um, data from the selected row index first, this one. Hide it in the uh, local variable and the one underneath in the other variable. And then I just swap them here. Put this one in this first index and this one in the other one. But this only affects the underlying 
data, not the user interface. So what to do to actually update the user interface with that? Because this event just gets a copy of the data. It's not by ref by any way. You, you just get a copy of the array of data. So what I do here is I simply clear the grid so it's empty now. I fill it up again with the data where I just switched those two. So it will actually look like we just moved. Okay, let's take it again here. And uh, we want to move harm down this way. So even if actually we're clearing the list and filling it up again, you won't even see that. It just looks like we just put him down. So that's what we can do um, not using the drag and drop techniques. But it's some of the same thing we have to do afterwards. We just link it to whatever we can do with the drag and drop technique afterwards. So um, what to do to make this drag and drop? Well, add the JavaScript library. And um, you'll do that. We have this Dragula JavaScript library. And um, you'll ha then have to subclass the weblist class to include the methods from the JavaScript library. Um, so actually, the only thing that we need to do in the, in the, uh, in the view with the list here is to change the class to the new subclass that includes methods from the JavaScript library. But then again, we must remember that the JavaScript library only uh, knows the user interface and not the underlying data. So it will only affect the client UI. Let's see the, the, uh, the next demo here. Take this one, and um, again, we have some people who can take some. Oh, yeah, I need to have a car first to put, uh, put the, the people in here. And remember what uh, we had there. We had the people in the, uh, in the car here. And this time, we have a small point, a small icon at the right side of the, of, um, of the line. And uh, that is a drag handle. To be able to move these items, we have to, we have to grab this and move it. So um, you can see what happens now. We just move that. But it only happens in the user interface. The underlying data is still the original one. And uh, let's see how we are going to change that. We must implement the data set manipulation in the new events. The event that the uh, JavaScript class has, and uh, let's take a look at that. We have two events that we can use here. An on drop, which of course will uh, get called whenever we drop an item somewhere. And it tells us which row ID has been moved. And it tells us which class or which object it's coming from we're not going to use that in this case because we only have the same list. We're not dropping from, dragging from one object to another one. In this case, we only have the one. And then it is going to tell us which row ID it will be dropped before. Just like we moved the two items before and used the insert before. So. Here we have the row ID that's going to be uh, moved, 
and it's going to be put in somewhere just before the other one. The other event we have is on remove. That event is going to be called whenever we drag an item from a list and drag it out of the list and drop it somewhere else. That means we're going to get rid of it from the list. And it only tells us which row ID it was and which parent was the last one to have it. So if we're going to implement that, um, we first have to set some properties that will make these event get called on the right, uh, in the right moments. These three affects how the JavaScript class will, will, uh, will work. Use drag handle true or false. You can see the small point we had at the, uh, at the end. Uh, and then we have revert on spill. If that's true, then if you drag an item out, out of the list and drag it, drop it there, it will simply go back to its original place again if revert on spill is true. But if the other one here, pb remove on spill is true, it will then call the event on remove. And um, we used the button before to remove an item. And the only thing we did there was actually that we call uh, the data set remove row with the row ID that we actually got into the, uh, to the, uh, to the button. But here, we use the on remove. On remove, and it tells us which row ID we are removing. So only thing we have to do is call the same method. Send data set remove row is row ID. We can go back and see how it works. So here was my mouse. Just drag it by this point. Yeah, OK. The president would have said it slightly different, but uh, I'll leave that to him. Um, you can see it removes the item. We're going back again. Implementing on drop. Well, it's a little bit like the one we had before. But it tells us the row ID that has been moved and which row ID it will be dropped in front of. So we do something similar to what we did before. First of all, we um, create a property to remember which row ID actually should be uh, dropped and which row ID it should be dropped before. And then again, we call the process data set. And this time, I call it nine as a parameter. Um, we have, again, a variable row. We web get the uh, move row ID to this. And then we said we web get the uh, insert before to is insert before. Um, first of all, we get the row data from the row being moved. And to find that, we have to traverse through all the lines in the list for E row from zero to max. If the data from this row, its row ID is equal to the one we're moving, then we just take the entire struct and put it in this variable. And afterwards, we're going to copy all the other items, just like we did before, 
um, clear a grid, fill it up again, and fill it to a new array, T web row, new data. And we'll only do that from all the other list, uh, list items, not the one that is being dropped. And instead, we just look, well, the item that we're going to fill in the new array now, is that the one that is being dropped before? Oh, yes. It, oh, then we might just as well put the original data in there from the variable row one. We put it in, and then afterwards this one. So we have now got the data in, in the right position. And then we do the same, clear the grid, and fill it up again. Um, so let's see the next demo here. And check this one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you already learned something. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay. We can take Dennis and Harm. Uh, we can take John and, well, to Jonas and uh, Niels. And remember what, uh, notice what happened over there. I simply color the one that we already picked. And the technique I used there is, remember there was this method called data set update row. I take this data from the original, and then I change the one single element in that called the CSS class for this item. And then I refresh the grid and I point it to a, a CSS class that makes it green. Well, um, we have something else here, like for example, we can show these on a map, Google Maps. If it wants to play with us, oh yeah, maybe it does. That's not quite optimal to go that route with, the, with, with those people. From A to B to C to E to D and to E and then to F. That's not good. So we might just um, move around to get a better, a better route. We'll take away this one again. And um, other thing. Uh, actually, what I do, what I did to uh, get the the map, was again I called this process data set, and in that I get all the data, take the uh, x y locations, and create an URL to Google Maps with those locations, and put it in a, a new uh, browser tab. Um, and what I do, what I'm going to do now is also press another button that here, calculate times. And you know that they are going to be at the school at 10 past 8. There's no time on the other yet. But I can call a small routine that uh, actually calculates that. Yeah. And in this case, the entire trip will take like one hour. That's because it's not quite optimal. But um, let's see. Uh, on the map again, what would be most optimal to see here? Well, it's a little bit slow here. The internet connection. Optimal will 
be actually that uh, D should be the last one. D should be E, and E should be the very first, and then we should swap A and B, right? So we, we should actually start with the one called E right now, here, and then go to this one and this one. So if one can remember that, we will have to uh, move that. Let's see. Close that again. First of all, A and B should be swapped. Um, yeah, the drag handle is away. Okay, I need to refresh here. Just sorry, but um, we just create it again. And it was Dennis and. Harm and uh, John, Jonas, and Niels. That was so. Uh, okay. Now, see, I can just take this line and move it without the drag handle. I simply put the uh, property to false with the use drag handle. Um, and then. E should be the first one, so this one should be up in the top. Let's see what that is. Oh. Oh yeah. <laughs> Actually, this is a quite this is quite a, another this is another view. This was not the test view actually. <laughs> But uh, you can see I implemented the, uh, the map in an iframe over there instead of having it in a new, because then we could actually see what we must do here. You see, A must be the last one. So this way, and it refreshes the one. This looks more like it. A, B, C, D, and then we end up there. Good. Um, get rid of the car again, and let's see what happens if we just remove one. Uh, take a note of John on the right table. Whenever he's been removed. Is not green anymore. So I update that as well. Okay. Mm. I'm gonna get rid of that. Um, I need to show something else that will not work on my local machine, so I need to go to another side. Um, we have it here. Um, this time I use Try to access a test server back in Denmark. Not well, let's leave it at that. It's not that important. Um, Let's do this instead. Instead of using the drag and drop techniques, I can also just use a button down there called calculate. And it will simply 
calculate all the uh, all the routes and place people on different cars, and uh, I'll do that here. Calculating without any errors, we take the other school. Oh. Calculate that one as well. And if the uh, taxi company is pleased with the way it has been calculated, we'll see we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of tours here. You can pick one and see how it how it's planned. Uh, we can take uh, this. And actually, we have Stour and Charlotte and, uh, on this one. If we're pleased with that, we can just lock it up. And if we lock this, it will actually be available for uh, the people itself out there. And they can go into the website and see how, how uh, am I going to be picked up tomorrow at which time, which time. And what we do as well, if we, if we are locking this, um, if somebody has uh, signed up for having uh, the agenda put out on an SMS on their phones, uh, it will be sent uh, at the moment that we, uh, that we lock it here. And um, then the uh, taxi company can print out labels like that and see at that time you're going to pick up store. Okay. Ah, right. Stuart got a message. Dear Stuart, you're going to be picked up Thursday at 7.19 at the address uh, Ralgu number 18, and, and you'll be at the school at uh, 5 to 8. This is uh, what that looks like. But... <laughs> and what the taxi company can do the driver gets into the car this morning, he can take his tablet or his phone. And now I cheat a little bit because this was the data that I was supposed to create on the other server that was not working right here. Um, Well, can't hear me. He can go in here. If we get some data. Oh, well, yeah. We actually do not have data for today. That was what I was supposed to create, but I can use the arrows there. Uh, if I click on the one to the left, it will show us yesterday. And if I click on the one to the right, it will show us for tomorrow. And then he can just pick one and uh, see, well, this only has one person, and he can mark it as I cannot do that because it's for tomorrow. If it was for today, I can press this one and say, this is done now, and it will be locked that he was at that address at that specific uh, time, and we can track it afterwards. 
So let's see if this still works. Yeah, we can even uh, create a small, oh, it's not working there anymore because I have the cable pulled out. This one is going to tell us for which car he has, at which time is it used during the day. And it will, uh, if you have two tours that are too close to each other, it will mark it red. So, well, you're, you're not able to go from one place to another in, in the specified fight time. So you can use that in his planning. Um, yeah, let's. Close that one, and yeah, it was again. Okay, thanks. The Google Maps, we already saw that. Um, yeah, that was just what I did for doing that going through the, uh, I take operation five this time, say this, this one is Google Maps. I put it there, have a function here, get gmaps URL from latitude and longitude, and uh, then website pure URL on the, on the web frame. That's pretty much that. And uh, the SMS uh, module, we saw that, and then the, uh, the app here. Um, so that's pretty much what I was going to tell you. So thank you for watching this show, as I say. <laughs> and um, this, this show has been dragged all the way from Denmark and has been dropped right in the center of Atlanta, right at the CNN studio. So uh, thank you. This was good news. <laughs>